you could implement that would save or help the company get more sales instead of just you know sitting around administering the, the print server or the backup jobs or provi provisioning SAN lugs. Once things were moved to the cloud, uh, then you know conceivably you could be more efficient. So what makes up an infrastructure as a service cloud? And by the way, I'm getting um, a number of good questions here. I'm going to try to save those to the end. We're getting close, actually, uh, to the end, and I want to allow plenty of time for questions. So I'll get to all these questions. So keep them coming. Um, I will get to them. So an infrastructure as a service cloud, whether it's private or public, is going to have these features. First off, it's going to be 100% virtualized. You've got this virtual infrastructure. Maybe you're using Microsoft Hyper-V or VMware vSphere. Um, you've got that virtualization layer. You've got centralized management. All your servers are running, let's say, the ESXi hypervisor. And with that, you're going to gain features like high availability, like resource pooling, like clustering, like distributed resource scheduler, where you can load balance what's happening in the virtual infrastructure. You've got flexibility, like vMotion. You can move running virtual machines from one host to another. You've got storage vMotion. You can move uh, running virtual machines, virtual disks, from one SAN to another. So that's what the virtualization layer provides, and that's what um, actually powers, I would say, an infrastructure as a service cloud. Then on top of that, an application like vCloud Director is going to provide you the self-service portal, which is really just a web interface. You can go in as administrator. You can carve out virtual data centers, assign users. Then those users can access the cloud through the same web interface. They can. Uh, they can create virtual machines on the fly from a catalog of virtual machines that you've created or they've created and uh, very quickly you know, bring up new applications. They could clone a development server into a second development server. They could clone a production server into a development server. They've got this great flexibility that they don't have to come to you for anymore. Uh, you've got a service level agreement. Let's hope, let's hope even internally, but definitely if it's a public cloud, they've uh, got to offer you a service level agreement. Uh, you've got the flexible resource pooling and high availability, again, provided by the virtualization layer. So these are the things that make up an infrastructure as a service cloud, whether it's private or public. Other things that make up infrastructure as a service clouds, we've got more. Actually, I forgot about. There's even more here. The automation, right? Things are automated. Things can happen quickly. Um, you, perhaps you have scripts in place. Uh, perhaps there are um, you're using like VMware Orchestrator to orchestrate or automate common activities. You've got high security as part of vCloud Director. When you implement it, you're going to implement VMware vShield, uh, which has now been renamed VMware Networking and Security or, or vCenter Networking and Security, something like that with vSphere 5.1, which was just announced a couple weeks ago. But still, it's, it's basically it's vShield, which is a virtual infrastructure security package that's going to create firewalls between these clouds, that's going to secure these clouds, um, that's going to allow you know, one cloud to talk to another cloud across data centers. So it's really what creates this multi-tenancy and secures that so that you know, one, one tenant or one user doesn't negatively affect another. You've got resource reporting and billing. So for example, VMware Chargeback is what can go in and report on the usage of all of these tenants who are using the cloud. And then you, let's say you're a service provider, you can bill them. Or if it's internal, if it's a private cloud, then you can bill, let's say, the uh, divisions of your company, your internal tenants. And it doesn't have to be real money. It could be showback instead of chargeback. You're also going to have to w change the way you think of IT. You know, when someone comes to you with a new application, um, instead of thinking about, oh, I'm going to have to buy some servers, uh, think about the servers that are currently in your resource pools, that are currently in your clusters, uh, see, you know, how much capacity you have remaining, and then, you know, create that virtual machine, put the application on it, clone it, put it in as a template or a vApp, and then, uh, you know, provision it from there, from there or, or let them do the provisioning. And then educate the business to help them you know, change the way they think about IT. IT needs to be more dynamic, um, more agile, and they also need to uh, you know, understand uh, that IT is a partner in the business. 
So a common question and area of confusion is how cloud computing relates to virtualization. And I think I've already answered this, but you know, server virtualization is required for infrastructure cloud computing. It's the virtualization layer uh, loaded on top of the physical servers, the hypervisor, and the advanced features that is going to provide you that scalability, the elasticity, resource sharing, pooling, load balancing, high availability, the portability of the virtual machines. So you can, you know, let's say upload a virtual machine from your server at your site. You could just upload it to the public cloud. You could upload a virtual machine from, you know, VMware Workstation running on your laptop up to the public cloud as well. Uh, cloning, you know, the application catalog, the virtualization layer offers all these things. So what's your next steps? Of course, we're going to get to all these great questions. I'm really impressed with the number of questions. Um, 